Agnes Scott, I heard an environmental resident use this reminder to save energy. Every time you forget to turn off a light switch, a mountain blows up. She was referencing the harmful mining practice mountaintop removal, which is one of many environmental detriments of using coal as an energy source. Burning coal also releases pollutants into the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide, which is the leading cause of global warming and climate change. Clean coal technology is a technology designed to reduce these carbon emissions with major implications for the economy and the environment. Here in Georgia, over 60% of our electricity comes from coal. So this is the power that cooks the food in Evans, heats the water in the residence halls, and lights this room. As this issue is so relevant for the Agnes Scott community, I'd like to first define the term clean coal technology and then go into some of the reasons that people support the adoption of this technology and also reasons why people oppose this technology. So first of all, what is clean coal? Well, it depends on who you talk to. When coal is burned, it generates steam, which goes into a steam turbine, and that motion goes into a generator where electricity is generated. While this is happening, emissions are coming out through the smokestack. And it's what comes out of that smokestack that is a source of much of the controversy over clean coal technology. In a traditional coal-fired plant, not only is carbon dioxide emission um, emitted, but also sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides, which are the chemicals that lead to acid rain and smog. Now, in a modernized coal plant, according to the Department of Energy, plants are required to install limestone scrubbers on top of the smokestacks where they capture sulfur oxides and store them underground. Some plants also have low NOx burners, which burn the fuel in a low oxygen environment, preventing nitrogen oxide from ever forming. However, these plants still emit carbon dioxide, and the latest definition of clean coal technology is a plant that does not emit carbon dioxide. So far, that doesn't exist yet, but the most promising technology is something known as carbon capture and sequestration. Much like a limestone scrubber, this would capture carbon um, before it is released into the atmosphere and store it underground. If the technology works, it's estimated to reduce emissions by 85 to 95 percent. To explain the technology further, I'd like to show you a video from the website Climate Central. A conventional coal-fired plant emits carbon dioxide by burning coal. Carbon capture and sequestration technology, or CCS, starts with the separation of carbon dioxide while generating power. The CO2 is transported by pipeline to a suitable site where it is injected in liquid form deep underground into a porous layer of rock and sand that can absorb the CO2 and prevent its escape to the atmosphere. Now that you have a better idea of what clean coal technology is, I'd like to talk about some reasons that people want to adopt this technology. Most advocates point out that we already depend on coal for about 50% of electricity in the United States, and it is the cheapest and most available fuel that we have. According to the American Coalition for Clean Coal Electricity, coal costs less than a third of any other fuel, which explains why 23 of the 25 power plants in the country with the lowest operating cost use coal, and it only costs one to two cents to transport coal. This translates into low prices for the consumer. The national average for electricity is about 8.9 cents per kilowatt hour for prices. However, in Georgia, where 62% of electricity is coal produced, that price is only 7.8 cents per kilowatt hour. And in Wyoming, the discount is even greater. 95% of their electricity is coal-based and they have very low prices of 5.3 cents per kilowatt hour. In Maine, however, only 2% of electricity comes from coal, 
and they pay over 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Luckily, this inexpensive source of fuel is abundant in the United States. National coal reserves are about 250 billion tons. To put this in perspective, that's the equivalent of 800 billion barrels of oil which is more than three times the proven oil reserves in Saudi Arabia. So not only do we depend on coal for electricity, but it could be important for establishing energy independence. Now, if we already depend on coal, you may be wondering why anyone would criticize coal that's clean. The biggest problem is that it doesn't exist yet. Advocates or opponents point out that there have been some test projects, but none have been very successful. The Department of Energy sponsored one, the Future Gen project, which would use public and private funds to build the first carbon-free plant in the United States. This project was canceled in 2007 by the Bush administration, citing cost concerns. Now, it has been reinstated, and construction is expected to begin in 2012, but already some of the private companies, such as the Southern Company and American Electric, have pulled their funds, again saying the project is too expensive. Now, another problem, according to a recent report by MIT, is engineering. The report said that if a suitable site for sequestration could be located, then 99% of the carbon would be likely to stay put for a thousand years. However, it's finding that site that is the problem. One project sponsored by BP was to build a state-of-the-art carbon capture and sequestration facility in Australia. But that project was also canceled because the site chosen for sequestration was later found to have too many cracks. Now, even if these problems could be overcome, environmentalists point out that there are severe concerns with the environmental effects of the technology. For one thing, over 40% of mining companies still use mountaintop removal. So this is, uh, contributes to destroying ecosystems and contaminating drinking waters. And if we continue to use coal, then this practice would also continue. Now, modern clean coal technologies, such as scrubbers, might remove emissions from the atmosphere, but those wastes are stored in solid and liquid forms in something known as a slurry pond underground. In late 2008, the New York Times reported that a dam surrounding one of these slurry ponds in Kingston, Tennessee broke, spilling some 300 million gallons worth of sludge. The sludge surrounding these houses here contained high levels of heavy metals such as lead, thallium, arsenic, and mercury. These could all lead to cancer, birth defects, and disorders in the nervous and reproductive systems. Environmental and public health advocates are afraid that new carbon capture and sequestration technologies would have some of the same problems, and that by continuing to depend on coal, we are perpetuating these dangerous situations. Now you have a better idea of what clean coal technology is, as well as some of the reasons that people advocate adopting this technology, and also reasons why people oppose this technology. Now that you have a better understanding of the controversy surrounding clean coal, I hope that when you eat lunch in Evans, take a warm shower in your dining hall, in your residence hall, or study in the library by a light that stays on late into the night, that you'll remember clean coal and wonder if this technology could increase your tuition, solve global warming, or if it could ever exist at all. <laughs>